Welcome to the demo of visualizing Cisco telemetry data using Elasticsearch log stash in Kibana. The aim of this video is to show how to deploy the Elk stack to collect Cisco streaming telemetry data and to perform visualization based on the collected data. For this demo we have NCS 55 way router pre-configured to send telemetry data to the Elk stack. The configuration of the telemetry of NCS 5000 and NCS 5500 routers is covered in another video. Elk stack is comprised of three popular open source components Elasticsearch, Logstash, Kibana. These components together create an end to end stack for data collection and analytics. Logstash is the log collector, Elasticsearch is the component that does the indexing of the data and makes it available to Kibana for visualization. We have an NCS5508 router pre-configured which will start sending the telemetry data to the ELK stack once the ELK stack is deployed. There are multiple ways of installing the log stash, Elasticsearch and Kibana and configure them as a stack. In our demo, we will deploy the ELK stack using the repository that Cisco has made available on GitHub. In this repository, Cisco has pre-packaged the ELK stack along with the codec that Cisco developed for Logstash to collect the telemetry data. We will deploy the ELK stack on Ubuntu server. The Ubuntu server has IP connectivity and reachability to the NCS5508 router configured to send the telemetry data. Let's get started. The tasks to install and set up the ELK stack are listed on the right side of the screen. I am accessing the Ubuntu server for the installation. The Ubuntu server on which we are deploying the ELK stack uses a proxy server to access the internet. That is why we will start with configuring the proxy settings on the Ubuntu server. For installation on servers which are not behind an internet proxy, you can skip the proxy configuration steps. In order to configure the proxies, let's edit etc environment file and specify the proxy servers. The address of the proxy servers we are seeing in this video are used only as an example. In your case, if you are behind a proxy server, use your own proxy server address. Let's also edit the apt.conf so that apt can access the internet via the proxy. After making changes to the environment and the app.conf, we will exit the shell and re-log in for the changes to take effect. Let's update the apt and then install git. For the deployment of elk stack via the repository available on GitHub, we need a working git and a docker. We will install the git using apt install. After that, we will install docker. After installing the docker, we will modify the docker configuration. We will provide the DNS address and the proxy addresses for docker to resolve hostname and access to the internet. After making the changes, let's save the file, exit and restart the docker service. At this point, our git and docker are both installed. Next we will clone the repository that is available at github.com forward slash cisco. After the clone is done, we see a new directory by the name of Big Muddy Network Telemetry Stack, which is created. Let's go to the Big Muddy directory and then Stack Elk directory to run the script to build the stack. Before we build the stack, we will have to make changes to the log stash configuration file. Make changes to the ls underscore telemetry log stash config file and add wire format is equals to 2. This will allow the logstash collector to determine that the TCP stream contains JSON data. Let's save the file and exit. To initiate the stack build, let's execute the stack build script and also provide the collector IP address. The collector IP address is the IP address on which the logstash is listening to collect the telemetry stream.
After the stack is built, the configuration files for the stack are saved in var local stack underscore elk directory. In this directory, for each of the Elasticsearch log stash and Kibana, a separate subdirectory is created containing the relevant configuration files. Let's check the log stash configuration file to verify that the wire format is equals to 2 and the collector IP is the same as what we have provided at the time of the stack build. Other than that, there is no need to change the configuration for Elasticsearch and Kibana unless we want to customize these components. For example, if we want to listen on a different port or an IP address. In our demo, all these three Elasticsearch, Logstash and Kibana services are installed on the same Ubuntu server and we have left them to listen on the default ports along with the default configuration except for Logstash. We will see the default port numbers when we run the stack. At this point, we have done all the configuration and we are ready to run the stack. Let's go to the Big Muddy Network stack directory and then stack elk directory to execute the stack run script. Here as well, we will provide the collector IP address followed by the stack run script. In the output, we can see the stack is running. We can also see Logstash is listening on port 2103 for both UDP and TCP connections and Kibana is listening on port 5601. Let's verify that our stack images are running in the docker. We will do sudo docker space ps space minus a for this. We can see Logstash, Elasticsearch and Kibana services are created and running. Let's also verify that Elasticsearch is listening on port 9200. This is the Elasticsearch default port. So far everything looks to be working. Let's now access Kibana from the browser and see if we are getting any telemetry data. As mentioned earlier, for this demo, we have already configured NCS5508 router, which will be sending telemetry data to our ELK stack. First time when we access Kibana, we will have to mention an index pattern. Let's keep it default. The default log stash index pattern will query the Elasticsearch for specific matching patterns. Let's click on the Discover tab to see if the data is being collected. As we can see, we have started receiving the telemetry data. We can click on the graph and also select time ranges to filter data. Let's create a simple visualization based on the data we are receiving. Let's create a line chart that will show us the current number of BGP routes in the NCS5508 router. We will click on Visualize tab and choose Line Chart. Here in the field dropdown, we can see that there is a lot of content available based on the telemetry data we received. Since we want to see the active BGP routes, let's select Active Routes field. For the x-axis, we will select the date histogram to show us the time period. We can see the line chart for active routes is generated. Let's save the visualization. Let's add this visualization to the dashboard. Dashboard is where we can add all the saved visualization to view them all in one place. Let's create another visualization. This time let's create a pie chart for the available physical memory of the NCS5500 router. We can see a pie chart is generated for the free physical memory for the last 15 minutes based on 30 seconds interval. Let's save this visualization as well and also add it to the dashboard. These are just a couple of simple examples of visualization of telemetry data. There is much more we can do with the streaming telemetry. For instance, analyze the network in real time, locate where the problems occur, and investigate issues in a collaborative manner.
I hope this demo will help you getting started in exploring the Cisco telemetry feature and the benefits this feature can bring to your network. Thanks for watching.